everybody. So remember, it was probably about, I don't know, six or seven months ago, I made a video talking about the Safe Supply Act and how it wouldn't work. Well, here's cops from BC. I believe there's a sergeant here. She's going to, uh, he and she is going to talk about um, a little bit about what's actually happening with that. So let's have a look at the video and then we'll talk about it a little bit after. I seem to understand that the decriminalization of simple possession has had more positive impacts than negative impacts. I do not agree with that statement. And I would concur with uh, Deputy Chief Wilson. Since decriminalization, our overdose deaths have not decreased in the province of British Columbia or have our overdose rates. Prior to decriminalization, if someone was using drugs in a problematic circumstance, for example, at a playground, or um, at a, a bus shelter, or at a beach, um, police were able to, uh, uh, community members were able to call 911, police were able to attend, and were able to address that circumstance. In the wake of decriminalization, there are many of those locations where we have absolutely no authority to address that problematic drug use, absolutely no authority to address that problematic drug use, You know, again, I, I know that's a bit of a, a short video, but it's it's kind of insane how these liberals, I know this is more of an NDP idea, but the liberals agree with this. And what I said back then was when you, when you have a society that is not generally as happy as it could be, it's not thriving as it could be, and you have more and more people turning to drugs, and you have the availability for these people to just kind of do these drugs wherever they want without the, and the police can't do anything about it, that's a problem. You can't have these things going on at, on at bus stops or parks or beaches. There's needles everywhere. People can get hurt. Uh, there's you know people who are, are generally in involved in uh, hard drugs like that usually are often more involved with crime. So now it's like, well, I don't want to take my kids to the park because there's needles, there's people hanging out there that are not very reputable, let's just say that. You gotta take a bus home from work or a bus to school and there's a someone passed out or potentially overdosed on fentanyl, just laying there on the bench. Not to mention when you when you see people who are doing these hard drugs, they're not gonna be they're not gonna be like stable, normal people. And especially if they are uh, if they if they've been out of their drug and they're addicted to it and they're starting to go through withdrawals then what you're going to see is them start to potentially try to rob people just to get enough money so they can get their next, their next fix or their next fix rather. So, you know, I know there's places in Europe, I believe Portugal, like, someone's going to have to fact check me on that. I believe it is Portugal who decriminalized all drugs, but you know, there's a difference between Portugal and Canada, especially now when you look at Canada and how many people are suffering financially and, you know, after the lockdowns, there are people who lost their businesses. There's more people who, like if you look at the depression rate, it's skyrocketed. Depression and drug use, in my opinion, kind of coexist. It's, it's most people who have mental health issues or like depression specifically will usually use something, you know, whether it's a few drinks or some marijuana, but there's some people who get really deep into drugs. And most of those people did that because they have some sort of a pain that they're trying to numb and get rid of, or at least get rid of it temporarily, because they don't have a way in their mind to get rid of it uh, completely without these drugs. So they use these drugs so at least they can have a few hours a day where they're not stressed or having panic attacks or whatever their, whatever their issue is. So, you know, when you make policies like this, because I used to think that decriminalizing drugs was a good idea. But I don't anymore, because when you think about, you know, places like Portugal who do not have the exact same problems that we do, they're also more of a religious country. <clears throat> the family household is much stronger and it's more intact in places uh, like Portugal and in Canada. And by the way, I, I know Portuguese people, this is coming from what they say, maybe I'm wrong, correct me, but from what I've heard from my Portuguese friends, who either have spent time in Portugal, who have family back in Portugal, their families are kind of like strong, stronger connected, and there's not as many broken households as there are over here, apparently. So if that is the case, it, you know, when you have a, a dad and a, a mom in the household together raising kids, and they're doing a good job, and they're teaching them the right ways to live life and the right ways to, you know, be an adult, you're going to have less drug abusers. 
But when you take those same policies and you put them over here in Canada, where there are more broken households, there are more people who have mental health health issues, they're going to use more drugs. And now you're making it so that they can just do this whenever they want, wherever they want, and the police have no authority to stop them, and it's dangerous for the community. And like the, uh, I believe the, the sergeant said, drug overdoses have not gone down. Crime certainly has not gone down. So what is this for? Why are they just giving these kind of drugs, especially drugs like fentanyl, to people? Is it really to actually help them? Because if that was the case, they would realize what's going on right now and they would scrap the policy, but they're not. They're doubling down on it. Why? Because they don't care about you. Say what you want about the conservatives. They do not want to enact these crazy policies that do not work. And then once they do not work, they, they're they not going to double down on something that's dangerous for Canadians. Hopefully. So that being said, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about this policy. Are you a fan of the drug? The, I, think, I, I believe it's called the Safe Supply Act. Are you a fan of this? Do you think that they should get rid of it? Uh, what's your ideas? Please let me know. I always look forward to reading the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll be back shortly with another video.